Hi and welcome to a new tutorial regarding Unity and WebRTC and this time we're going to have a look at how to stream one video stream to multiple clients over the network with WebRTC and WebSockets. So I'll start off with a short demo. Let's start our application. So the WebSocket server is started and we're now starting the streaming. As you can see, there's a rotating cube. We're going to stream it over the streaming camera. And if I now connect my clients, client one, client two, client three, and we even have a client connected over the network. And as you can see on my Android phone, the stream is connected too, and we're now trying to move the streaming camera. The movement is also populated to the Android client, as you can see on the right side. So now that we saw that everything is working and that there is a lot of logging going on, let's have a look at the code. Now first, let's have a look at the project. So I have my streaming camera here. This is just a normal Unity camera. I have my UI camera, which is responsible for the scene view, because when you are streaming with the streaming camera, this will no longer be available for game view. Light, volume, a log canvas. We already talked about that in the last video, which just displays the log text we saw before. And a WebRTC media stream server. This is just a simple data channel server, which will exchange the data for the clients over WebSocket. Afterwards comes the media stream sender which will be activated if i start if i click on start call and my receivers which can be for instance be activated when i'm connecting from a client over the network and we have our android object which is already activated, where the component is already activated but the game object is only activated if we're going to build for the android phone so just to show you beforehand if you're going to take this and publish it on an android phone you can just activate this one and deactivate everything else regarding the server and if you publish this to a client which is then connecting to a server that's already running you will see the streaming image here let's revert it back to the original state just for easier testing and the sender is the sender component and just the cube which is rotating and the canvas, which, which is just a raw image, we are going to use streaming our image. And this is linked here in the multi receiver media stream object, and the streaming camera is over here. Basically, the same is for every receiver. We just have a raw image here linked to our streaming receiver component and in canvas, which will only display the texture that is streamed over the network. This is the same for every client, even on the Android side. And that's it. We have the system logger attached. We already saw it in the last video. And the setup of the scene is pretty simple, although it looks a little bit complicated due to a few canvases and whatsoever. But the real magic is happening in the code, which, we, which we'll have a look now here. And let's start by the signaling message types. We, I just added one other type, which I call channel. This channel type will be important for all the multi-user streaming. And just before diving deeper, I'll just give you a short explanation how this is working. So just imagine, although it's not correctly displayed in this image, that this in the middle is our streaming server, and these are our clients, and each client has a one peer-to-peer -peer connection to the streaming server and the server will have to handle all these connections so we have to log every client which is connecting for streaming and that's basically what we're doing with this channel here so channel does only mark all our signaling process and i changed the messages itself from the um, structure a little bit but we'll see that in a second then I created a new signaling message class. This is basically the same as before, but our message is now three parts long. So there will be two exclamation marks. The first will be the type. The first part of the message will be the type. 
the second part with the channel will be the channel ID. This is just a simple counter channel one, two, three, four, five, and the third part will be the message string, which will be split up here. If the length is correct, this is just the default values. And that's basically it. Result type message array one for the channel ID and two for the message. It's just splitting up a string. And let's have a look at the service. Um, important to mention is that the service will only work correct if the sender connects to the server first. So the sender will send a sender message to the server after connecting and the server will save the ID so that every client which will connect afterwards will know who the server is. So after the server has connected, the WebSocket server knows the server ID from our streaming server. Maybe I'll just call it streaming server in the future. And everyone else who is connecting as a receiver of this stream will first establish a connection to the server. And get the information that there is a server in the network. So that's basically what's happening here. Sessions send to. I'll send my information channel count to the server. Okay, server, there will be a new channel here. Do everything necessary to update your peer-to-peer -peer connections. And I will get the information. Okay, there is a server. Um, I connected to this server via the WebSocket channel. And I, as a client, have to update my peer-to-peer -peer connections too, so that I can hand handle my connection to the server. This may sound a little bit complicated, but it will make sense in a second. And everything else we're doing is just forwarding message to everyone else except myself. This will happen after the connection is established, the peer-to-peer -peer connection is established. Now it's getting a little bit more complicated. We have the multi-receiver multi media stream receiver class here, which is basically the same as in the last classes, but with a small change. This is the same, this is the same. We're now going to create our peer-to-peer -peer connection when we receive the channel message. So every time we receive the channel message, we will create a new peer-to-peer -peer connection as we're only connected to one server on the client side, on the receiver side. Start also, we're just connected to one sender. So after connecting to this sender, we will have to create a peer connection to make sure that all the events are triggered correctly and that we're just to the on track of our sender. So the channel message is coming in. We are creating a new peer-to-peer -peer connection. And after this peer-to-peer -peer connection is created, we'll just handle all the other events like the offer or the candidate messages as before. And we see here that after we connected to our WebSocket server, we'll send the receiver message here, assuming that we're connected after the sender, start our WebRTC update, and everything else is the same. If you receive an offer from the sender, we will create an answer, and this answer will be sent over the network with our channel ID that we got from the server, because it counts the channels, and after that, the connection is established. As always, feel free to pause the video here to just copy the code and I'll just go on to the sender class. There were a few more changes here. So we now, except from all everything else we had already, is a channel dictionary where the channel ID is the key and the peer connection is the value. 
and we have the same here we're creating a new signaling message for our channel and if the type is channel we're going to create a new peer-to-peer -peer connection and save it in our dictionary the channels dictionary having a new channel id handling all the peer-to-peer -peer connection stuff like the on ic candidate the connection change the negotiation needed for sending an offer for instance and we're adding the track the video stream track from our streaming camera and here is the important part adding the new connection to our dictionary and if we're now establishing a connection with our receiver we will have to lock the answer specifically for this channel for this channel id so when we're receiving an answer after our offer is sent we'll do the same as always just setting the remote description and so on and here in channels answer channel id because we got it from the signaling message we'll set the remote description for this specific channel so i know for instance the third client connected and on the third channel i have now my uh, connection established and i'll have to set my descriptions correctly to send the data over the network to this specific client the same goes for the candidate messages this stays the same and we'll have to add the candidate to this specific connection for everyone who viewed the previous videos now i just moved the answer method up here this was a separate method before i just thought it makes more sense to have it here because the channel id will be set here you can again split it up i tried to keep it a little bit more compact this time and do a little bit less scrolling and important here too after we connect we'll have to send our sender message to the websocket server just to notify so hey the sender is connected adding track the texture start the coroutine closing the channels after we destroyed our application and the create offer method stayed the same from the previous video and that's basically it we just made a few small changes and now we can stream all of our video data from one sender to multiple clients and if you're now asking wow that would be cool if that would result in some kind of video chatting application stay tuned there is a lot of on my list but i'm planning to do a tutorial on this as well and maybe on the video chat application we'll start from complete scratch to just give you a total overview of how this will work but it's not sure yet so stay tuned and thank you for watching i hope you liked the video and please like subscribe activate the bell and so on you know what to do it's youtube after all and i'll see you in the next video bye